I originally started and created this meditation um, for my distance clients as a way to help um, remove any energetic blocks and align their physical body, which I couldn't do. I was like, how do I align their physical body if I'm not there with them? And how do I help facilitate that? So I, I started this meditation to do that. But I quickly realized that I was getting benefits out of it, that it was amplifying my energy and also acting as a protective tool in my healing practice. And why most protective devices um, create like a barrier. We think of a protective barrier. Um, this one works by keeping your own energy free from blocks where things can get stuck, like a clogged pipe. You know, if you're dumping something down an already clogged pipe, it's just going to get stuck in there. So when your channels are open, there's a free flow of energy. So during the meditation, I'm going to talk about a toroidal energy field. So I thought it would be best to share what that looks like with you so that you can visualize it when the time comes and it'll enhance your meditation experience. If you're wearing shoes, I'm gonna give you just a minute while I'm gonna switch cameras. I created a little tiny grid and I have some singing bowls. These are range anywhere from 150 to 600 years old from Tibet that I'll be um, using as part of my meditation today. So while I'm switching cameras, I invite you to take your shoes off. And the reason why I'm asking you to do that is because the rubber on the soles of your shoes create an energetic block. And we want a free flow of energy. So I'm just going to switch the camera while you guys take your shoes off. Somehow this is blurry and I'm trying to figure out how to fix this, but it's not quite working. Vivian, can you take me off of um, host just for a second? Because I think I'm not able to change my background. Just for a moment. I, I, I removed the pin from Deborah for the moment. Okay. okay, let's see. There we go. Wait a minute. Take your time, Deborah. Don't 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 panic or worry. There we go. We'll wait for you. Yeah, that's looking yeah. better. There we go. Okay, so now how do you, now we got to pin this? Now you can pin me back. Got it. Lovely. Okay. So now if you're ready, let's begin just by letting go of all outside stimulus. Take a minute, a minute to go inside. Bring all your awareness into your own body and your own breath. Look inside. Is there any tension? gripping or tightness? Are you experiencing any pain? Are there any pleasant tingling vibrations or sensations of flow and ease? If you are experiencing feelings of happiness or sadness, anxiety, peace or boredom, there's no need to alter or even try to make sense of anything. Just notice how you feel right now and be with it. Acknowledge these feelings and sensations as they come into your awareness without judging them. And then let them go. Mm -hmm. 
Take this time to connect to yourself and experience your true nature. Be open to being fully present here and now. Feel your breath flow in and out and allow it to go deep into your belly, filling your whole body with a beautiful light, a radiant light that softens, lengthens and widens every cell with each inhalation and allows for a sense of deeper and deeper relaxation with every exhalation. Now notice the places that your body is touching a surface that you're sitting on. Feel the weight of your sit bones growing heavier and heavier. And feel the space between them getting wider so you can really connect to the chair. Allow the chair and not your muscles to fully support you so you can relax. And each cell of your body can soften, lengthen and widen without, with every breath, without any effort on your part. In your mind, look to the space below your feet and using just the slightest amount of pressure, connect into the earth as if you were plugging a cord into an outlet. And as you feel your feet connecting into the earth, it may give you a natural lift in your spine. Notice and allow the bones of the spine to gently stack one vertebrae on top of the other in perfect alignment. If it feels good, you could bring your shoulders all the way up to your ears, all the way. And then as you release them, allow the scapulas, those flat shoulder blades to slide down over the top of the back of your rib cage. Ever so slightly lifting the heart and expanding the lungs while allowing the breath to become even deeper yet effortless at the same time. See your collarbones opening and widening and naturally dropping to the sides of your, so your arms can hang freely with the unobstructed flow of energy through them. Breathe and relax. This is not something you can force. The minute you try to do it, an energetic block will be created. So just relax and allow this natural alignment to take place. Now feel the space above your head and imagine you have a string coming out of the top of your crown connecting you to the ceiling and supporting you from above so that your head feels almost like it's floating on top of the spine like a balloon. Now slightly draw your head back and drop the chin just a, just a touch. Take a moment and notice how you feel. Remember, alignment is not something you can enforce. Allow your body to be fully supported by the surface that you're sitting on, as well as the earth and the sky. Experience the ease of floating effortlessly between the two. And notice how that feels. Once again, draw your awareness to your feet where there's a free flow of energy coming up from the earth. This is a loving, receptive, feminine energy. Some call it yin energy. I like to picture it in my mind's eye as a silvery white river spiraling up from the earth of light through the feet, bringing with it the love and compassion from our mother earth as it enters the soles of our feet and continues through the ankles, the calves, the shins, up through the knees, the thighs, the hips, 
continuing on and activating our root chakra, the sacral chakra, clearing all blocks between each chakra as it goes up through the solar plexus, the heart, the high heart, relaxing all the muscles in the neck and the jaw as it passes through the throat chakra. In fact, relaxing all the muscles in the face. You might even notice the space between your eyebrows softening and widening as it goes through the third eye. And as it passes through your crown, notice and see if you can feel the skin on your scalp soften and experience each hair on your head as if you're floating underwater. Notice this energy continuing on and exiting the crown of the physical body and then cascading down and all around the sides, creating a toroidal field that then loops up into the earth and back through the feet in a perpetual cycle of energy. Take a moment and experience that amazing, free, unlimited source of energy coming up from the earth through you. And notice how you feel. Now I invite you to connect to the space above your crown chakra where the energy from the sun and sky are entering. This is a warm, more masculine, active energy, often called yang energy. I see it because I'm a visual person as a stream of golden light spiraling in through the crown chakra, bringing with it an access to all knowledge as it travels down through the chakras, making its way through our legs, before finally exiting out of the feet into the earth and then rising up around our body, creating another toroidal field, which then enters back in through our crown in a perpetual energetic cycle. Notice how this feels. And if it's any different from the energy coming in through the earth. Now become aware of the two energies, creating this double bubble of silver and gold light, one traveling up from the earth and the other one coming in from above. Can you feel them both at the same time? Now draw your attention to the fourth chakra. It's the central chakra, the heart chakra, and use the heightened sense of awareness that you have opened up to experience this space where the feminine and the masculine energies meet and mix in a sacred union. Allow the energy to build there at the heart from the sky and the earth. You may notice a warmth or a cooling you might even feel a tingling or a vibrational sensation. If you're a visual person like I am, you might even be able to see in your mind's eye the beautiful energy that's being generated there at your own heart. Just take a moment and experience it. Allow it to continue to build and build. And eventually it will spill over and take its natural course going up through the shoulders, down through the upper arms, through the elbows, into the forearms, through the wrists and out through the palms of the hands and the fingertips. Take a moment 
to experience the unobstructed flow of energy from the earth and the sky, blending at your heart and flowing through your hands. And notice how that feels. Now open your eyes. Bring your hands out in front of you. Did your shoulders tense or your posture shift when you moved your hands? Did you lose your connection to the earth? If you did, just take a moment to realign, connect to the earth and soften again. Allow the shoulders to relax and the energy to flow freely from your heart. Now feel the energy between your hands as you move them closer and then farther apart and closer again. Remembering to keep the spine aligned and the shoulders and arms soft so that there's a free flow of energy. Play with it. What does it feel like? If you're a visual person, you might even be able to see it. So just take a moment to experience it in your own way. See how far apart that you can feel it as you move your hands. And how the tension builds as you bring them closer together. Then place your hands anywhere on your body that you could use some extra love and attention. The more you do this meditation, the more familiar you will become with your own body and the easier it will be for you to discern the difference between your energy and the energy of others. Without energetic blocks, you'll learn to observe this information without attaching to it. So you can address it using the universal energies to boost the energies of the crystals through your hands and then let it pass through, leaving you feel refreshed and enlivened instead of depleted. Eventually with practice, you'll be able to do this meditation in just a few breaths. So we're gonna try that this once, but I really invite you to practice the meditation in its totality um, before you do this. But you can do this eventually between each session that you do, any energy work that you do in just a few breaths or any time during the day where you feel like you need to be um, grounded, centered or have some more energy. So the first breath in, center and align the spine. Second breath, Ground and connect to the energy of the earth. Third breath, lift and connect to the energy from above. Fourth breath, allow them to mix at the heart and travel through your hands. This simple act has had a profound impact on my personal and professional life. It's helped me become a more effective, happy and healthy light worker. And I hope it really serves you well. So, if there's any questions or comments, I'd love to hear what, you're, what you experienced during the meditation or afterwards where we were actually playing with the energy. Um, I'm gonna place my, my phone back here. And maybe I don't have access to see the questions. So if there's any questions or comments, if someone can let me know what those are, that would be great. Oh, I see that. So these are crystals that um, I've been, as I said, I'm, I'm 60 years old and I've been collecting crystals since I was about five. My father was a paleontologist and we've been going to crystal shows and gem and mineral shows in Cincinnati actually, um, since I was a little girl. And I, so I have quite a collection and the, the little grid that I had created, it uses it. I have a tensor ring in the center 
And then there are a variety of, those are some of my personal favorite um, chakra attunement wands. I have a collection that's probably like three times the size. They're all about three to four inches long of tourmalines and um, topaz and uh, kunzite and clear quartz and stilbite and all kinds of uh, zincite and uh, aquamarines and spare different barrels. So that's my personal high vibrational stones. And I just wanted to share that with you today um, to help amplify this wonderful energy that we, that we created together. Very cool. Thank you. What is still by generally used for? I have some and I forget because I know you're not supposed to really touch it or rub it. Is that right? Well, it does have lead in it. And Vivian has a wonderful um, procedure. I have a little for my large one that I use for crystal surgery. I have this little crocheted piece that I put on the end of it so okay. that I can hold it. And I also have a piece that's inside of... Um, calcite that's actually grows inserted in the calcite so I can hold or actually it's um selenite um that's okay, a selenite, fairly yeah. new find out of China and it's used for tuning the chakras almost like you tune a musical instrument and I don't have access right the handy still bite or the calcite the still bite right right and that and but it is inside of calcite or it's inside of the um selenite so when you're using it it's actually grows that way so okay. you can use it without worrying about handling it or you can just get like i said i have a little tiny crocheted piece around my long one to touch it I for can, your fingers yes to, that yeah. i can hold the end with my fingers and not worry about getting any lead if i'm using it and it's used to tune the chakras and um, I don't know, Vivian, I know you have the book handy, what page that is on in the book, but there is, it's, it's how to tune your chakras um, okay. in the how to read or the um, complete guide to crystal surgery book by Vivian. Okay. Very cool. Thank you. Thank Did you. anyone have any experiences when they were playing with the energy or notice their own alignment and the, uh, the sensations coming through from the earth and the sky, mixing at the heart? No. Sounds lovely. <laughs> hi, Deborah. This is D. Hi. And yes, hi. And yes, I did experience quite a bit. I've worked with the... I have a hard time saying that word, toradal uh, energy. Uh -huh. And when you had said the silver coming up and the gold going down, I could actually see like a mist directly around my heart. And also there was a mist in between my hands. Beautiful. And, ev and everything just started glowing. It was awesome. It was just and awesome. And you can carry that with you when you work with people, whatever energy modality healing that you do, you're using, instead of using your energy coming through the crystals and depleting you, sucking you dry, you're using these two universal unlimited um, yeah. energies that's amplifying the crystals and you're getting the benefit of that amplified energy. So when you're finished with your session, instead of feeling tired, you feel like you just had a cup of coffee without the jittery feeling. Very, very energizing. It was Wonderful. awesome. Thank you oh, so thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else got any questions? Um, I was just going to ask as far as um, the maintenance and like the cleansing of them. Um, do you do moonlight? Do you do sage? I've heard you can just kind of breathe on them, like giving them kisses to purify them. I'm curious. I'm going to grab something here real quick. I have several things that I do um, because I do have such a large collection of crystals. Um, it's impossible for me to take them all out in the moon. But just in the same way that 
more births happen during the full moon, more um, emergencies happen through the full moon. That full moon energy is coming through your house. You're not going to be able to stop it. You don't, Mm -hmm. you can't, you just can't stop it. But one of the things that I like to do, this is a selenite, um, a satin spar bar. It's pretty long. And I use it almost like a scanner that like when you scan, it used to be when you scan a document and I can just run it right across all of my crystals when I'm finished. Um, During sessions, I use um, the crystal bowl like Vivian does. And I will dip, um, trying to see where my crystal bowl is. I moved all of my crystals off my board yesterday (laughs) so that I would have a clear space to work in. But just like basically a geode with an opening at the end. And then you just in the same way that I would use this, I dip my crystals in as I'm as I'm working, continually clearing as I go. And sometimes I'll even use the singing bowls. I will do this and dip it in and allow that vibrational energy. You mean you're doing them. one hand with the singing bowl and then the other hand you're just holding it in there. Is that right? Or just leave it on the leave it here and I just dip oh, it in. in. It. Okay. Yeah. Just so that that especially if I'm working on a heart chakra. And I want um, really to clear like heart energy or something like that. I might use a singing bowl. So it really depends on the crystal itself. Um, Some are not good to wash because they could dissolve. Um, Some you can put in salt. Yeah. um, I've had that happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you can, but you can, and you can also use your mind's eye. Um, when I took also the melody courses, um, she would teach you to beam a beam of energy with your third eye to clear the crystals. But oh. I've, I've become accustomed to working with um, a small geode and clearing as I go, just dipping it into that geode of energy. And, um, and I consciously ask that that energy be sent back to the source of its origin to be alchemized into love for the highest. Yeah. Of all beings. That's, so that's a, well, something so I do. sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean to interrupt. I was That's just okay. going to say, so it's not so much the action of saging it or salt baths or, you know, windowsill moonlight at just the right time. You can in different fashions, use third eye, use your breath. Um, and just, that's a good point to take it back to its origin, you know, for some healing there. Okay. I guess I was, I thought it was more busy work you know, then, well, when you have a, when, as you, as you grow and you get a larger collection, I mean, it would be great. And I do sometimes take certain crystals out into the moon and the sun, open the door and let that fresh air really cleanse them completely. But, um, it's not practical when you have a really large collection. collection. So you have to come up with creative ways. And, and I've thought a lot about this. There's no stopping that. <laughs> that moon energy. Yeah. That moon energy could- coming through your house and clearing your crystals as, as you go and, and ask your guides and your, and your angels and the ascended masters to come and, and participate them and to use, you know, benevolent light workers and light beings to come and help you with your work and to help keep your crystals clear Um, because they're, they're all around us all the time, eager to help us. I had, um, just heard about um what is the stone that protects against 5g it's black um, well there's um there's shungite shungite thank you okay. and which is very very messy as you know i've tried to take baths with it um it just seems to get it's very hard it's like almost like spray paint that gets stuck to the porcelain from the and i've rinsed them and but is there any other stone to put, you think, to g- do a good, like, full moon bath or Well, there's different talking? kinds of shungite. Now, the elite shungite is probably what you've been using, which is non-polished and it's flaky yes. a lot of times yes. and it will leave uh, marks yeah. on your hands. But if yeah. you can get polished shungite. Okay, and, that's true. And and it's not, it's not like that. And also okay. um, salt. Salt is one of the most inexpensive, overlooked, wonderful crystals that you can yeah. use to balance yourself, to take a salt bath, to do a little. Um, Vivian has 
energetic salt scrub. It's like a, a spa treatment for your energy field in her book, and which is fabulous. And uh, it raises, you know, the salt creates negative ions, just like lightning does. And also the wonderful feelings that you get when you go to the ocean or even a, a stream, because when the water um, evaporates, it creates these negative ions, which are moon, mood boosters and elevators. Okay. And um, so, and it's also very cleansing. So if you can't, a crystal that you can't put in water, you can take some, some salt and, and just put it in the salt. Not mm -hmm. wet, but just like keep it in the salt to clear it. Salt. You, right, in the salt, not okay. wet salt. Um, right. So, and it's the same with your own body. Yeah. You can do that for your, you know, salt is so overlooked. It's such an inexpensive crystal and, and so, such a wonderful crystal and with so many uses. And I, I can't recommend that enough. Yeah. I mean, I've seen, I think the Shungite really does help too with um, the 5G you know yes yes so. most definitely i have pyramids and a bunch of um square blocks and even my cell phone holder so here is here's a one of my shungite blocks that i have a like a whole row of them that sits behind me where my computer and my cell phone holder is a shungite cell nice. phone holder nice so that i can keep wow. my my phone in that. So I'm not constantly bombarded. There's a lot of wonderful products like that. Gosh, I wish I had your collection. <laughs> <laughs> I better start now. Do you think, cause what I've done and sorry to be like chatty, I've had way too much coffee, um, but I typically buy like the crystals that are the size of my palm kind of, you know, cause sometimes I just put them with me or whatever but do you feel like for more magnitude if you really needed to heal or if you really needed help with your energy levels and to get the bigger crystals i mean it, it you makes know sense. that's a it's a two it's a, a um on one hand yeah, it depends on what you do if i was wanting to do a grid outside my house and create like a grid which i'm i'm also a grid teacher um then i would want larger stones but one of the things that i found with the crystal surgery distance sessions, mm -hmm. which we've been doing since COVID hit, you can use very small stones on a proxy crystal and get the same effects as if you were using a large stone. Mm -hmm. So you have a okay. crystal as Vivian was showing earlier, where she had a single um, Diamantina that she was using like this, like this one. Here's a a golden healer with blue smoke Lemurian. Wow. And so you would, I would use this as a proxy crystal and it's flat and I can place my, my stones directly on this crystal, just mm -hmm. like, and, and use it and attune it to the person I'm working with. And then it's like, this, this is them. Wow. And so a stone that's this size. Mm hmm can have the same impact as a stone that's this size. Mm -hmm. It's, mm -hmm. it's amazing. It really is a powerful, um, I've grown to love distance work because mm -hmm. it's, it is so powerful. And you're actually, instead of meeting on a physical level, you have to meet that person and the energetic level. Hmm. And then okay. you're already there in this beautiful space in that field um, that you're creating together. Hmm. And then, and then, and you don't really need large crystals for that. Mm -hmm. Of course we love the large crystals. <laughs> I, I know, I know. Yeah. I, um, they just, you know, it's like a plant, like the bigger it is, the more noticeable, you know, it is, but I know they all have their purpose. Um, so cool. And they Last might be good night. for you. It might just be good for you to be around, okay. for you to surround yourself. One of the mm -hmm. things that I love about crystal surgery and Vivian's work is that, you know, so much of our healing is like the night of the dark soul and all of this trauma mm -hmm. and all this. And for me, crystal surgery is all about that healing can be beautiful. Mm -hmm. It can be, it's done in increments, small layers, little bits at a time. So it's yeah. not overwhelming. It's not, doesn't knock you off your feet and pull the, the rug out from underneath you. Right. And, and it, and it's done with these beautiful stones. 
you know, it's all yeah. about all about that. So surrounding, there's nothing wrong with surrounding yourself with beautiful stones. Yeah, no, but that is a valid point because most people, when they hear awakening, healing, it's like, okay. oh no, I'm not ready. Yeah, Deborah, like, we we need to we need to stop. Uh, it, I think this conversation can continue uh, between the two of you at an, at another time because it's obviously fascinating and important. But we need to move on to the next piece. Okay, so does anybody have any? Last question for Deborah, and otherwise we will move on to the next section. 